Okay, class. So next we'll get into the phases of cardiac rehab and kind of how it's structured generally. So uh, there are three phases, um, phase one through three. So phase one is kind of what we see in the hospital, the inpatient side. Generally, the goal for that is to get patients back to normal activities. So about three to five METs, we make sure they're at least clear for that before going home. Um, phase two is the outpatient side. That's what mo most people think of when they say cardiac rehab. It's really kind of this outpatient side. Um, and then phase three would be maintenance, which would be a structured program, um, you know, that patients can follow independently on their own. There are some programs where there's supervised or semi-supervised. Um, you don't see much insurance coverage for this, uh, at least stateside. Um, but the goal is to transition those patients who've you know, made all, all those huge changes over 12 weeks into this maintenance phase. So um, the, the phases generally or traditionally used to follow this like process of wound healing after uh, an infarction. You know, we have that scarring and, 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 and the, the heart heals. So that's kind of the value of this um, structured process, especially in phase two, when we can monitor patients to make sure that they're stable to exercise. So the, the old adage is, well, like the value of cardiac rehab is like, well, we're going to send patients home to do things throughout the day and we want them to exercise. Um, you know, if we're concerned about events, it's probably better for them to do their exercise here so we can monitor them to see how they, how they respond. Um, so that's the real value of, of phase two is like, all right, like we're going to reintroduce you to exercise and activity, um, but monitor you to make sure that you're safe. So phase one, again, typically pretty short because most patients don't stay in the hospital that long. Um, so we're just trying to identify impairments that may preclude them from going home and to make sure that they're able to perform basic activities of daily living again. Uh, phase two is that, that 12 week traditional outpatient program where we're reevaluating weekly or biweekly, we're testing, prescribing exercise. That's where all that counseling and stuff gets done. And then phase three is that maintenance program where patients can sometimes uh, follow a supervised program, semi-supervised or an independent program where they're at home or a home-based program. Um, and typically insurance covers most hospital admissions. Um, phase two is typically covered for those eligible diagnoses and phase three typically not covered by insurance. Now, phase one is where a lot of PTs will be involved, and right? we'll learn more about this um, in our acute care side, but uh, you know, acute care side can be kind of wild, right? You walk into these rooms with lines and leads everywhere, and you guys have gone through some of it already in some of your courses, but um, you know, some, it's not too uncommon to walk into this um, you know, when, we, when we're in the inpatient side in phase one. So phase one, it's in the acute hospital. The, the goal is to get patients back to activities of daily living. So ambulation, stair climbing is typically the thing we wanna make sure they're able to do transfers, stuff like that. We're gonna be carefully monitoring vital signs because uh, you know, if someone had a heart attack or even a cardiac procedure, there's a risk of a thing we call a recurrent MI uh, within four to eight weeks after an MI and after a cardiac procedure like a cabbage, the heart's kind of irritable and prone to arrhythmia. So we wanna be monitoring closely making sure patients are safe. We don't really want to work them out too hard because again, the heart is still repairing, right? It's scarring down, it's healing, right? It's going through that process. We don't want to get the heart rate up too high or work them out too hard in that, you know, peri, peri acute phase, right? Um, the recommended heart rate recommendations for someone in phase one, especially after an event, less than 120 beats per minute or no more than 20 beats per minute increase from resting. So, you know, this is for patients who may be sitting at, you know, a heart rate of 70, right? We don't want to bring them all the way up to 120. We're going to keep them maybe at 90, right? So no more than about 20 beats per minute from resting heart rate. Now, uh, the PT implications, again, like this is really kind of the bread and butter of acute care PT in general, right? Is that we're going to make sure you know, patients can get back to activity. We want to get them out of bed because if people are laying in bed, they're going to have acute deconditioning. And if someone's already coming in with an, an MI, maybe not super active in general. So if like we throw on five days of deconditioning on top of that, that's not as a recipe recipe for 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 failure for for poor outcomes. We want to get people up, get them moving, monitored, and within a safe range. But we want to get them moving. 
It's also going to reduce the risk of blood clots, bed sores, and other issues like pneumonias, right? So gradually increase return to activity. Assessing whether people are able to do activities of daily living safely and their level of independence and determine where are they where are they going to go after the admission? Are they going to go home with family and do an outpatient program? Or do they still have some lingering deficits that would make them a little bit of a risk to go home, right? You know, do they need to go to a skilled nursing facility? Do they need to go to a rehab hospital first before going um, home to an outpatient facility? And again, you'll get more expertise doing that. Um, but uh, yeah, that's the role of you know, PT in, in this phase, really, of cardiac, um, cardiac rehab. Um, you, you know, yeah. So our assessments, um, it's, it's just like you would have any patient, right? We're going to do assessments for exercise capacities. You could do your two-minute step test. You could do your six-minute walk test. We want to do maybe a gait speed. You know, anything that you feel that would give you good data to test your hypotheses to see what um, body systems may be impaired that are impairing or impacting their ability to perform functional activities or activities of daily living, we want to test that. So if we think balance is impaired, let's test balance. If we think um, gait speed is impaired, well, let's test gait speed. Or if we're concerned about ambulation, community ambulation, well, let's, let's test gait speed. Let's do a six-minute walk test, right? Um, if we want to see, you know, if someone's safe to go home and they've got a flight of stairs, well, let's see how they tolerate climbing a flight of stairs. Are they safe to do these things at home? And what is their level of assistance needed? Um, and probably the biggest thing from the cardiac side, right, is ensuring, um, one, that the patients get a referral for cardiac rehab before they discharge. So again, while PTs in this country primarily have a role in the phase one side, um, and less of us are participating in phase two, that's changing in some to some degree. But we have a huge role in making sure that patients do get enrolled in it. We have, a, have a, an opportunity to advocate for our patients that, hey, like, let's, before you leave here, and we're finding that, you know, patients don't get referred within that 21-day window after admission, they're probably not going to participate um, and probably will never get referred. So making sure people get referred for cardiac rehab and are aware of it, had that first visit established even before they leave, you know, that, hey, like, you have this scheduled at this point, you talked it over, brought in the caseworker, talked to the family, this is what you need to do before they even leave the hospital. The hey, like you need to do this. This is super important for your recovery to make sure that you're safe. So that's a huge, huge component. Like if anyone, ever, if you ever work with a patient in the hospital and they come in for a cardiac admission, like, you know, find out if they're eligible and if they're eligible, get that referral for them established before they leave. Because if they don't get it, the odds of them getting it once they go back you know, to their outpatient clinic is low very low and it doesn't happen. So make sure they get it before they leave. Uh, so get off my soapbox there a little bit. But, um, and again, obviously the same thing for typical inpatient side, getting the moving, starting on a basic walking program um, and, and how to you know, self monitor as well too. Now, the important thing is again, most time for patients who come into a hospital, they're not staying there very long. So a stent like we talked about, most patients are there maybe one to two days, right? Like they'll get stented, stabilized, they'll monitor them over a couple couple days. Um, you, you know, PT sometimes isn't even consulted, which is a whole separate issue. Um, but you know, maybe you'll have one consultation with them just to make sure they're safe to go home. Um, and then you'll be part of that discharge planning. Again, making sure they get that rehab referral for cardiac rehab before they leave. Valve um, replacements, coronary bypass take a little bit longer. Bypass is a little bit longer than valves. Like we talked about. With valve replacements, once we fix the valve, they generally do pretty well. Heart transplants are there for sometimes up to two weeks. Um, and that's like, because it's a little bit more severe of a, of a procedure. Um, but either way, the timeline can be shorter or longer depending on the patient. But um, these are the general timelines. So again, phase one is pretty short. We're not going to be making huge physiological changes towards fitness. We're stabilizing, getting people back to to making sure they can do ADLs, assessing whether they can still do them, and then get, preparing them to go home and to start cardiac rehab from the outpatient side. So phase two is what we think of when we think of quote unquote cardiac rehab. This is a structured exercise program um, that patients are going three times a week for 12 weeks where they get the education as well, the counseling, these different things. Like this is 
when we think of cardiac rehab, this is what, what most people think about. Um, now, in terms of clinical assessments, if you're involved there, right, um, I have some things you might want to assess, but realistically, like the assessments are going to be pretty similar to what you would do typically as a PT, right? Like, you know, if we think patients have, um, we obviously want to assess vitals, we want to assess these other different factors, right? But if we think a patient has like weakness, we're going to assess strength. We think a patient has issues ambulating and getting around. Well, let's test exercise capacity. Like what, you know, test the hypothesis of what we think may be involved in their condition, right? And test it and then develop a program around it. If we think dyspnea, right? Shortness of breath is a problem or dyspnea with exercise. Well, let's test the respiratory muscles. Let's see if those are contributing to it. If we think strength is an issue or functional strength, well, let's, let's assess do a five times sit to stand or a 30 second chair rise test. Like there are different things that we can still do for these patients. Um, so the, the, the clinical assessments don't look you know, too dissimilar. Um, a big component for cardiac rehab will be your, your exercise capacity tests, um, six minute walk tests, incremental shuttle tests. Most facilities um, will do a submax test to some degree or a CPET if they have it available. And there's some general recommendations for, uh, for testing. Um, where patients are, um, you know, how, how we, you know, implement it. So typically before someone's discharged, they'll have a submax test, usually a walk test or a stair climbing assessment to get, so can they do at least five minutes of activity? And after discharge, when they're you know, enrolled in a cardiac rehab facility, they'll get a formal assessment and then they'll have one, um, you know, a, 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 a informal assessment every couple of weeks, a structured formal reassessment at six weeks, and then one at discharge. So, a 12-week program, you'll have one at baseline, one kind of in the middle, and one at the end. And that's typically how they're, they're structured. Now, phase two, again, it's 12 weeks, two to three times per week, typically programs, um, durations for each session is about 45 to 60 minutes. Every facility is different. Every patient's different. Combination of aerobic strength and flexibility training. Some facilities use ECG monitoring. Some don't. Um, and all typically include some form of education, whether or not it's you know, structured in classes or individualized. And again, you know, reassessments on exercise capacity and some of these other uh, body system impairments will be done, you know, every week or every two weeks and with a formal reassessment every six weeks, typically. Uh, now, there are some great resources from the ACSM. Obviously, you guys have read this, but the AACVPR, um, or the American Association of Cardiovascular and Pulmonary Rehab is one of the, the large governing bodies for cardiac rehab programs. They've got great resources on, on how to develop a program, what needs to go into it in terms of training. Because again, like, you know, PTs are fully capable of working with these patient populations, but cardiac rehab does require some additional training. You need to have ACLS certification, you need to have ECG monitoring, you need to have crash card available. So it, like to do a, a true cardiac rehab program, it's, you know, there is some additional training and additional resources you have. And the AACVPR provides a nice uh, blueprint for what you need to have to develop a formal program. But we'll get into some other opportunities that PTs might, might have to, to work with this population outside of a traditional cardiac rehab program. So um, next we'll get into some monitoring um, recommendations. So in terms of, um, Cardiac rehab, again, we, we want to work with stable patients. If patients are acutely unstable, you know, not appropriate for exercise, or if they're showing signs of you know, ischemia, right? So uh, the general rule of thumb is if anyone's QRS complex starts to widen more than 0.12 seconds, typically we're going to pause, reassess, and see if that comes back down, but we're going to stop exercise. And if they demonstrate more than six PVCs per minute or a couplet or worse, uh, so that could be, you know, a triplet or a um, some sort of VTAC. So um, again, you know, this is common after an acute event, so we want to be monitoring for this. That's why the, the value of ECG monitoring for, for cardiac rehab. Same thing with glucose. If it's too high, uh, you know, that's a concern. Or if it's too low, we can follow the ADA 1515 rule while we give a you know a unit a measure every 15 every 15 minutes. And obviously, blood pressure cutoffs as well for these patient populations. Now, here's just an example of, again, the serious dysrhythmias, uh, things that we want to monitor for, again, sustained VTAC. Um, it's a reminder that it's, it's not uncommon for people to demonstrate 
PVCs, like 30 to 40% of people demonstrate them during exercise. It's not super uncommon. But if you're, if you're throwing six PVCs per minute, right, again, a PVC contracts out of rhythm, right, um, which causes, you know, um, the, the heart to contract potentially before it has opportunity to fill. So maybe you get a period or a contraction with really no output. And the more and more of those you have, the less you know, the less output you might have and less stable the heart is in general. So if we start seeing six or more, probably gonna stop. Or if we start seeing any runs of VTAC at all, but especially sustained VTAC, multifocal PVCs. So in addition to just six or more, if we start seeing like two different morphologies, that's also a uh, reason to stop. I mean, because remember the, 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 if we have different wave morphologies, that means there's, a, there's, a, there's multiple loci are multiple of these ventricular pacemakers, those ectopic pacemakers. So to see multiple of those, that, that's not a good sign. So we're gonna stop there and reassess. Um, and then ventricular couplets or triplets, right? If we see either one of these guys, two PVCs in a row, or three in a row, we're gonna stop, okay? So uh, we'll end here, and then we'll get into some um, of the interventions that are done in cardiac rehab and the evidence for that.